And how appropriate was it that that last chapter was called A Flaw in the Plan? Because we really weren't expecting the series to end this way. That chapter was ridiculous. This goes in with the pacing issue. Here's a list of all the things that she tried to fit into that one chapter. Harry comes back to life. Harry gets carried back to the castle. Neville stands up to Voldemort, who uses him as an example, and Neville destroys the final Horcrux. All of the Death Eaters are taken out by students. Harry and Voldemort have their final showdown, and then the craptastic resolution. I can't believe she tried to fit all that in one chapter. One chapter. Worst of all, and I mean worst of all, was the epilogue. I seriously wanted to vomit after I read that. It was the cheesiest thing I have ever read. And I never use the word cheesy. I love cheesy things. But this was too cheesy, even for me. It didn't explain what happened to anybody. What happened to Hagrid, McGonagall, George, the Weasleys, Luna. What are Harry, Hermione, and the D-Bag doing now? The epilogue was only about six pages, and you learned more about their children than you learned about the established characters. And their children! Albus Severus Potter. Scorpius Malfoy. I think the names speak for themselves. The series ends with the words, all is well. Now, I don't want things to be difficult for Harry all the time, but all is well? For such an extraordinary series, it just felt like such a normal ending. It just didn't feel right. Time for the fun that is plot holes. Let's start with the way J.K. Rowling ruined many of her beloved characters with writing so goofy you feel like they're from another book. Well, let's start with the star, Harry Potter. Now, Harry is pretty consistent for the most part, but he decides that when he hears Rita Skeeter's reports of Dumbledore in her book and that Dumbledore is a very bad person, he turns on Dumbledore, believing that the old coot was trying to deceive him and that Rita Skeeter is right. This is very interesting, considering that Rita Skeeter has messed with Harry on several different accounts and tried to ruin his reputation. And Dumbledore has always, always stood up for Harry. Now I realize that Harry was mad that Dumbledore hadn't left them more information about their mission, but come on, the guy was killed before he was ready. And it's Rita Skeeter. And it's Dumbledore. It's like comparing disease-ridden apples to oranges grown in heaven. This shouldn't be an issue. But I guess when you're in love with Ginny Weasley, it's hard to stay true to your own character. Although Ginny had a crush on Harry in the second book, he didn't like her back. And that was it. Ginny was hardly even a character until the sixth book. And in the fourth book, J.K. Rowling put a good deal of emphasis on Ginny and Neville. What happened to that well-matched pair, I might add? Then, in the sixth book, BAM! Ginny is Harry's sex dream? He when he was just with Cho in the fifth book! Ginny isn't even a secondary character. She's third string at best. Their personalities have nothing in common. They have no chemistry, as pointed out by their dull and awkward interactions. They break up and then end up married? Harry is the hero of the book. You don't put your hero with a third string character. You put your main hero with your main heroine. This is an excellent formula, when you're, especially when your main male and female have great personality matches, wonderful natural chemistry, and beautiful romantic interactions. Harry and Hermione are perfect for each other. It feels natural when they're together. When they were alone in this book, it was perfect. I don't get brother-sister from them at all, but I guess they can't be together, because they have to make way for Ronald fucking Weasley. This is the worst couple I think I have ever read about. Why would they be together? Why? All they do is fight. Fight, fight, fight! They say when two people fight that they really care about each other. <laughs> well, when one person is a beautiful, creative, sensitive genius, and the other one is an inconsiderate, moronic jerk-off, they don't care about each other. Ron always makes Hermione cry. And who's there to comfort her? Harry. I really don't know why Ron is still their friend. Any chemistry between Ron and Hermione is incredibly forced, awkward, and there's nothing romantic about it. Nor is there anything that exudes any kind of love. That's because it doesn't fit. How perfect is the boy who lived and the brightest witch of her age? Too bad. Instead you get the brightest witch of her age and a red-headed sack of poo. Brilliant, JK. Speaking of Ron, why is he smart in this book? In every other book, he, he's just an idiot who tries to be funny and does nothing but cause trouble. Yet for some reason in this book, he's a smarty pants. I mean, I can't explain it, and he's still an awful human being. But he seems to somehow have importance and ideas to contribute to the story this time around. And this comes from where? Let's move away from the main three. Tom Riddle's fate is very sad indeed. He's a pussy. He doesn't do anything. He controls the ministry and has the entire book to spread darkness and evil throughout the world, but instead he spends it flying around the countryside. J.K. tries to trivialize his existence to make him seem like he was nothing. 
Dumbledore himself has a marijuana-induced speech trying to tell Harry how Voldemort is nothing, and the way that he dies only further accents that he is nothing. Voldemort is not nothing. He's murdered countless people, caused who knows how many disasters. I mean, the man is so feared that people don't even want to speak his name. And you're trying to tell me that this person is nothing? Unbelievable. The most fatherly, admired, and comforting character in the Harry Potter series is Albus Dumbledore. A Dumbledore that many believe actor Michael Gambon does not portray very well. Well now he will, because our Deathly Hallows Dumbledore is a sniveling, flawed, manipulative individual. He kept Harry alive only so he could kill him at the right time. He was the one character who wasn't human. He was above that, and that's why we looked up to him. Now you've ruined that and turned him into just an old man. He thinks he killed his sister and talks about how greedy he is. The man was already gone, why can't you just leave it at that? Out of the blue he's this tormented, conniving, gay individual? You ruined your book, JK, but you don't have to ruin your characters. Okay, other plot holes, and this one is minor. Aberforth, Dumbledore's brother. How long has that man been in Hogsmeade? I mean, if it's just this book, okay, I can understand, but if he's been there for a while, don't you think somebody would have noticed that Dumbledore's brother was right there the whole time? In the beginning of the book, when Harry is being chased through the sky by Voldemort, his wand acts of its own accord and shoots golden flames at Voldemort. This is never explained in the book. Every character asked has no idea what happened. Dumbledore attempts to guess, but his answer only leaves more questions, hinting that Harry had Voldemort's skill and essence stored in the wand. So the wand recognized Voldemort, and even though his wand never did that before, when Voldemort was pure enemy, now that he's part kin to it, now it attacks him? and it chose that specific moment over every other moment to attack him? It's just utter bullshit. Harry is then saved by falling through the protective barrier to Tonks' his parents' house, then he goes to the burrow and- oh, Wait a minute, that's another thing! You hit him at the burrow? That is the worst hiding place! Wouldn't that be the first place they'd look? But Voldemort's an idiot in this book, so hey, I guess it's okay. One of the bigger and more annoying plot holes in the story was the return of Ron Weasley. Now yes, I hate Ron, but Hatred aside, the way he found Harry and Hermione just boggled my mind. Wait a minute, Ron, but how did you find us? Well, I was listening to the radio, and I heard my name from my pocket. And so, I took out the Deluminator, and it was coming from the Deluminator. Well, your name was coming from the Deluminator? From the Deluminator. Why? So I clicked it, and the lights turned off. Well, wait, and, wait a minute, so, so does this happen all the time? My name from the Deluminator. Right, 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 but that's never happened before. So I clicked it, and the lights turned off, and a light appeared outside. Outside? Outside. But wait, wait, no, 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 no. Why didn't it come from the Deluminator? Why, why, why did it, why didn't it come from there? It appeared outside. So I went outside, and I went over to the light, and I followed it to the shed. You followed it? It, it moved? I followed it. Okay. And when I got there, it went inside of me. Inside you. Then what? Then I apparated, because I knew it would take me to the forest you were in. How did you know that? Because it went inside me. But how did you know that? So Severus Snape is not a loyal Death Eater, having had planned Dumbledore's death all along. I was surprised at how many people found this shocking. I knew all along Snape was a good guy, even when he blasted Dumbledore. I thought it was obvious, but maybe not. Who knows? I'm gonna be honest, I didn't like Snape's past. After having heard it, I really didn't understand Snape at all. I figured she would pull something having to do with Lily, but if Snape loved Lily so much, why was he so mean to Harry? Sometimes he went out of his way to make Harry's life miserable. Was his feelings for Lily enough for Dumbledore to fully trust Snape? I didn't think so, so I was hoping for a better reason for Snape's allegiance to Dumbledore and why Dumbledore trusted Snape so much. In the chapter Malfoy Manor, the trio is captured and taken to the Malfoy's mansion, which is now being used as a base for the Death Eaters. Before they are captured, Hermione uses a disfiguration charm or something to make Harry look like he was stung by some kind of creature. The Snatchers capture Harry and recognize him, so they take him away to the manor. But instead of the Death Eaters turning Harry into Voldemort, they stall, confused by his distorted face. Lucius Malfoy asks Draco if it's Harry Potter, and Draco says he isn't sure. Even if his face is messed up, how long has Draco known Harry Potter? They're only rivals, bitter enemies. Draco can't recognize him? What about Lucius? How many times have he and Harry interacted, and he didn't know it was Harry? He was traveling with Ron and Hermione, who else could it be? For that matter, none of the Death Eaters recognized him either. It wasn't like Harry had a hidden identity. Wouldn't they have all seen his picture and knew what he looked like?